Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this morning study for a new week in the morning studies. And we're going to continue not on Jephthah. We're going to continue our studies uh, dealing with um, Ibzan, Elon, and uh, um, the guy, Abdon. So, uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord, um, for each morning that we can come together. We know, Lord, that um, there are so many struggles that we face in this world of sin and suffering. And we lift up in prayer those that are struggling um, with uh, the situations that are around them that seem to bring darkness to them. We just ask that your Holy Spirit can cut through that darkness, that your word can give us light, and it can give us hope, and that we can come to you and receive peace. We pray for this movement and the people in it. You know, Lord, how much we care um, for those that, that we know. And when we see them hurting in various ways, we know, Lord, that uh, we cannot make decisions for them. We can only um, be an example and reflect your character. And we know that we're not always successful in that. So we pray for forgiveness and that um, you can still use us in spite of the fact, Lord, that um, there are many things we do not know or understand and things in our character that still need to be uh, refined and things deep in us uh, that we have not forsaken. Help us to trust in you. Be with us now through your spirit as we study together is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, again. So um, you, we started on Thursday. Well, I believe it was on Thursday. We started putting Ibs and Elon and Apton up. Seems like a long time ago. Um, I think that actually we started the day before on Wednesday. I think we started putting things there on Wednesday, if I remember, but I could be wrong. Uh, what we did find, and, and we're going to look at the scriptures again here, but we we found just putting that first message, Ibzan, up there. Um, we ended up with this 300 days. And, and, of course, that's just something that exists in our history from December 6, 2020 to October 2nd, 2021. Um, and this would relate to how we refine this period of darkness. And before the study, Ron was sharing with me how he was understanding how we put these lines together and that he shared with others about this. And, um, and I think, you know, one of the things we saw on Thursday is that we can easily construct these lines, that these, these things are not a mystery to us anymore um, on how these lines work and their interconnection with other lines. So uh, the simple way that we would look at it is what we've done in Judges is we were studying the lines. We're trying to understand them. And we had gone through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. And, and we could see how these lines that when you zoomed into a way mark, you could create a new line. And, and then we went through, of course, uh, we skipped over quite a bit when it came to uh, the Exodus. There's lots of things that we didn't look at. Um, but when we got to the book of Joshua, we, we started to spend a lot more time to carefully uh, analyze um, the chapters. But when we got to the book of Judges and Judges chapter 2, we, we actually had an insight um, that uh, really aided us in looking at the book of Judges that we hadn't really applied previously. And I think part of it is because the, the book of Judges illustrates uh, very closely the present experience that this movement has. And that was seen by uh, understanding that Judges chapter 2, verse 1 to 23 represents 2001 to 2023. And then as we kept going through uh, the Judges, we had, we had come to a conclusion that these Judges represent a line, um, what we call the line of the judges or the judge's line. And that judge's line 
contains all the waymarks of a reform line, and each of the judges represents one of those waymarks. Though sometimes there's three judges together that represent a waymark, or Deborah Brack represent a waymark, uh, Tola and Jair represent a waymark, and now we're looking at Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon. They represent this waymark of December 25th, 2021. And uh, we spent a lot of time with Jephthah, which was very, very enlightening um, because we, we had looked at Jephthah before, but now we're putting them on these lines. And uh, one of the things that we do in constructing a line is we recognize that a, a line is a reform line and that a reform line is in response to uh, darkness. Because what a reform line is doing is... Um, giving light through this process, a three-step testing uh, prophetic message process uh, to develop and demonstrate two classes of worshipers. But it's also always addressing darkness. And each of those waymarks uh, represents an increase of light. We always put it at the beginning. You know, the first angel arrives and we have an increase of light. But an increase of light happens all along the waymark. Um, or all along the line with each waymark. And, and, and that darkness never completely disappears uh, until you get to uh, the third waymark, that, that the issue that's addressed at the beginning isn't fully resolved until the end. But of course, there's lots of darkness that we are in. Every waymark or every reform line um, only addresses a particular darkness. Now, of course, all of these reform lines put together at the end of the world, we can see how we are called out of this darkness into this marvelous light. And this light at the end of the world is the glory and character of Christ. So in a sense, all of these darknesses represent the departure from a knowledge of God. So all of these reform lines are revealing God's character because Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And when it comes to this particular reform line, and we look at it on the judges line, we see that it comes after December 6, 2020. And December 6, 2020, we know is a rejection of the symbolic use of dates. Um, so it's very particular. And so when we looked at Jephthah, here we had uh, a reform line by looking at that waymark that really illustrated uh, the significance of the symbolic use of dates and numbers and spans and time. Um, but now we're on the December 25th, 2021 waymark, which is the empowerment of the second angel's message. December 6th was a formalization of that message that arrived on July 18th. That message that arrived on July 18th, of course, related to our disappointment with the failure of the July 18, 2020 prediction. But that wasn't the end of our line because we had all of this light that was leading us to December 25th, 2021. So we know we had 525 days leading from July 18, 2020 to December 25th, 2021. And um, so, you know, now we look at December 25th, 2021 as a reform line. So Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon are relating to that end of the 777 structure. So it's the empowerment of that message, the second angel's message, which had to relate to our disappointment. So when we got there, we had a number of things happen. So Stephen had recognized the 777 years from 457 BC to 321 AD, something we should have obviously noticed, but we didn't. It was in God's providence that it was noticed on that date. Colin presented light that he had regarding uh, Daniel 3, Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4, and Revelation 17. And um, I actually was yesterday going over some of the studies, and you'll see why. Um, dealing with the presidents of the United States. Um, but that was in response to what Colin uh, presented there. But remember on December 6, 2020, we also had 
the issue of the presidents of the United States uh, that we were studying prior to that, December 6, 2020, we were supposed to continue that study, um, but instead the FFA shut down the studies and they issued a declaration. And so it's interesting when you look at the line of the judges that the empowerment of that is this presentations of Collins. So one is the thing that we have to recognize is that Collins' presentation, what he presented was light from God. Just because it's not fully understood, its implications aren't fully understood, um, doesn't mean that it wasn't light. Now, of course, his study leads to January 11th, 2023, even though in the study that he did last Sabbath, when I missed, um, which I've been watching, um, you know, there's this, this comment, and I, th I think it's Steve Welk making it, saying that, um, you know, we can't put a date at the last, you know, at the end of your line, right? The date is January 11th, and there's a resistance on the part of some to, to logically follow what Colin's study is saying, that if you're going to have this study that's based upon time, there's no way that you can just ignore the 46 and the 19 at the end of that study and say, well, you know, that's just going to now not be time, right? And, and hopefully people are, understand what I'm talking about with Colin's study. So we, we show that 65 days from uh, the election, November 8th, 2022, that that brings us to January 11th, 2023, to the end of that date. And that becomes extremely important because it connects to the structures that, that God had already given unto us earlier, particularly April 5th, 2030, right? So that's going to be 2,640 days, 88 prophetic months from that January 11th date to April 5th, 2030. And, you know, so when we look at this line, the one thing that we haven't been doing with these lines is putting the 8th, right? You know, we, we put the seven way marks, but we know that there's always this 8th way mark. And, you know, I don't, I'm just going to put this here. So we're going to put the fourth angel. We're going to put this as the eighth. And of course, that's not going to be Samson, but we don't know what that's going to be. Well, let's put this out of here. Well, maybe I'll put this up here, put the date in there. Because this date is April 5th. Oops. And this April 5th, 2030 date becomes extremely important because it ties so many things together. And, and this is, for me, the sad part about um, uh, the other people in the movement who aren't looking at this. I mean, this is huge light that God has given us because it helps explain so many things about 9-11 and 11-9 and Millerite history's connection to our history and and it brings us to this date in the future. And again, whether that's actually referring to some event or just symbolically, we don't know. But what we do know is we can't ignore it. And um, I was going over the study, and we're gonna we're gonna come to that a little bit. We'll look at this. But it was a study that we did on the presidents of the United States. I believe it was number seventeen. And uh, study number 17 uh, was entitled number eight. And, and it's significant, as you will see here, when we get into um, this, this line below. <clears throat> so we're just going to go uh, back to the scriptures here and look at these passages. And remember, you know, I mean, you guys all know that you can just comment anytime and ask questions. But uh, hopefully that, that sort of preamble kind of gets us back on track from where we were Thursday. Um, that, was, that was quite enlightening the way you went through that. I'm going to go back to when I get the transcripts and, <laughs> and use that. Okay. So, um, so we dealt with Ibzan, and what we did is we, we looked at uh, the symbol, especially the 30 sons, 30 daughters, and the 30... Uh, 
uh, daughters-in-law, right? And we we and also the symbol of seven years. And that's one of the things we have here in uh, this line is we have the seven ten eight, which gives us July eighteen. Um, so so this line is is still about July eighteen, which is the empowerment of July eighteen. Um, and then we had um, Elon. So Elon is the second way mark. And uh, Elon is a Zebulonite. So um, he judges Israel 10 years. And um, what would be the significance? Because we haven't really addressed this uh, in the last couple of days. But uh, the 10 years, what was the 10 years about? Does anybody remember? I'm sorry, Theodore. I don't have my notes now. My <laughs> wife is using the computer. Okay. Okay. So think about 10 years. What is 10? Well, off the top of my head, we've got uh, quite a few, but the one that sticks out the most is the, the 10 of it, you know, the, the, uh, the symbol for, um, Uh, globalism or the uh, the world. Okay, so uh, a symbol for the world. So the ten kings. It's the symbolism of ten kings. Also, the symbolism of the ten tribes of Israel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the ten tribes. So mm -hmm. it, it it represents it sometimes a universal, right? So it can be universal. Now, so one of the things about the message of July 18 is that um, this message, of course, uh, did get international attention. I mean, obviously, it wasn't headline news, but um, it, it definitely made a splash um, in, in the media, at least for some people, especially people who uh, like to criticize Christians. Um, now we had uh, Isaiah 6, verse 13 is Angela posted, and that is. Um, it's to do with the tent. Yeah, so the, 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 yeah. The remnant. Yeah, the remnant, right? And yet it shall be a tenth. Um, uh, also, so, it's got the, um, the 10 spies that came back and gave her an evil report. Yeah, which is sin. Mm -hmm. The ten spies it can refer to mm -hmm. uh, a tenth, which is a tithe, which is a remnant. Um, and it says here, and yet it shall be a tenth, and it shall return. That's the word shuv. Um, and it shall be eaten as a teal tree. Now, um, which would be like an elm, an oak, so. When it comes to nomenclature in the Bible, it's often hard to tell exactly what uh, an item is referring to because those things change over time. Um, but you know, it's probably some it's come, some kind of deciduous tree, and then because it says a teal tree and as an oak, right? So that's just um, one's Ella and one's Elan, so that they, they kind of look like similar words. Whose substance is in them? Uh, uh, so it's something uh, stationary that is a monumental stone, also a stalk of a tree, a pillar. So it's really referring to a pillar is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. And um, so when I think about the tenth, when I think about the remnant, and I think about uh, this line that we have here, the ten years, um, this is uh, this message. Um, when we get to December 25th, 2021, 
there is a um, well, I guess a remnant is a way to look at it. But you know, one of the things we had with this first message was this three hundred, right? So the three hundred is this thing that's whittled down, right? In the, in the story of Gideon, right? Yes. But but we also have in the this line 30, right? Because of the symbolism of Ibzan. There's three 30s there, which we know can represent uh, uh, three months. Um, and and uh, so one of the things that we saw with our connection to April 5th, 2030, is that we could take those, those months, um, the way that we did it, we had... Uh, we turn take the months and turn them into days, and then we turn the days into years, which can seem on the surface just kind of odd, but there's a reason why, because of the story of Ezra. And uh, and also dealing with not just the story of Ezra, but we have something similar when we have the 70th week in that we get a day for a year in a peculiar way. Um, so, so when we look at this December 25th, 2021 date, we know that that's the 20th day of the ninth month, right? So that's going to be uh, starting this divorcement. Uh, well, they're not going to start the divorcement, but they're going to they're going to plan to have this divorcement. And when we know that a remnant has returned to in to to Judah, right? And and when we look at the prophecy, so I'm kind of trying to bring all these threads together here. But when we look at uh, Daniel chapter 9, um, and we look at the three decrees, and we look at all of the, the things prophesied about the end of the 70 years and the, the periods of, in Leviticus 26, that it's a remnant that returns. And so I take this 10 years as representing a remnant, but that's because it can represent other things, but I'm not going to say it represents 10 nations or, you know, or the universal, you know, kingdoms or anything like that. Here in this context, I think it has to refer to a remnant. It calls it a 10th, right? Well, that's it. in Isaiah. It's a 10th. Yeah. Here in, in the story of Elon, it just says he, he judged 10 years. Oh, okay. Right. But I'm just saying that that's the symbol that I'm going to use with the 10 is it being a 10th, a remnant. Okay. And then. Okay. Um, so, so we can see how that remnant is going to relate to the story of Ezra. And then the December 25th, 2022 date we see is the first day of the 10th month in the biblical calendar, right? So we can see how this second message is tying to this third. Now, of course, we, we put that date there because of we're connecting these different Decembers. December 6th, which is the 20th day of the ninth month in 2020. December 25th, which is the 20th day of the ninth month in 2021. And December 25th, which is the first day of the 10th month in 2022. And we know that that's going to relate to the January 11th date. That's going to be the next way mark in the line of the judges with the line of Samson. And so we can see how that connects. So in this line, it's going to have that first day of the 10th month. And we can relate that to... Um, the prophetic months, right? So we can take, you know, prophetic months or uh, lunar months. And, and there's different ways that we connected these dates together. And so, so that's why this way mark, this January 11th, 2023 way mark, or not, uh, pardon me, the December 25th, 2021 way mark leads to this January 11th, 2023 way mark. So this way mark here, which is, the empowerment of the second angel. We know that the empowerment of the second angel leads to the arrival of the third, right? Millerite history, the midnight cry, behold the bridegroom cometh on the 10th day of the seventh month. 
right? It's the Agreed. seven month movement. So, so in this line of the judges, when we have this December 25th, 2021 20, waymark, it's the waymark there, but it, it doesn't mean that that, that waymark just addresses only that date. Every time we zoom into a waymark, these other lines are all being connected by the reform line that is produced by that waymark. And, and so that's why we can say, even though this line itself isn't going to put January 11th, 2023 in it, it's just going from December 6, 2020 to December 25th, 2022, it's still addressing a message that can be connected to January 11th, 2023, because January 11th, 2023 is the first day of the 10th month. If we use that structure from 9-11, 2001 to April 5th, 2030, right? In two different ways that we connect 2030 to September 11th, 2001. Um, so I know not everybody's going to remember all the details of that, but we got that from the story of Ezra. So January 11th, 2023 is as much the first day of the 10th month, even though it's not literally so, as December 25th, 2022. They're really the same way, Mark. Okay. So hopefully that, that's well understood. Um, just looking at something here. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, there was another thought, but I, I got to come back to that at some can point. Can you can you repeat that other thought you just um about December twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, being the first day of the tenth month, and January twenty twenty three also being just as much the first day of the 10th month, though symbolically so, right? Even though, you know, that is, we're not saying it's uh, because of the number date, January 11th, but because it's uh, 2,640 days to April 5th, 2030. Okay. Right? So being that number of days, it's 88 um, uh, prophetic months. And that 88 prophetic months comes from the 88 days from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month in the story of Ezra. So January 11th, 2023 is the first day of the first month because it's 88 lunar months. And we're doing a day for a month in the story of Ezra. Um, and so that brings us to April 5th, 2030, right? Because that's going to be exactly 88 months from January 11th, 2023 to April 5th, 2030. Prophetic months. I don't know if I said lunar months, prophetic months. So it's 88 times 30, which is 2640, 2640 days. It's a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month, which we had as our July 18th date in the biblical calendar, lining up with July 18, 2020 on the Gregorian. So <clears throat> so the point here is that when we're looking at this line, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, we have these three, but these three are 7, 10, and 8, which is July 18. Because in the way that the Bible would do it, you would say, uh, you know, 10 years and 8, right? You, there's not a number particularly for 18. You have to say 10 and 8. So we have 10 and 8, that's 18, and we have 7 at the beginning. The person could say it's 25, you know, if you added it all together. But 
you wouldn't say seven and 10 and eight. You would say 10 and eight to get 18 and you get seven for seven years. So, so we can see that the way that it's set up here is that this is a symbol of July 18th. And then we took Ibzan's um, gematria in English is 52 and Abdin's is 36. And we multiplied the two, 52 times 36, and we get 1872. So it's kind of interesting there. And then we have Elon, who's 10 years and uh, 46 is his number, his gematria. So he's got 10 years and 46. So we don't have a lot to go on with Elon. So we're going to go back there. And what we see with Elon is simply that we're going to have his um, his name, where he's from. We don't even have his father's name. We just know he's a Zeb from the tribe of Zebulun. We know how long he judged Israel. We know he's going to die. And then he's going to be buried in Agilon in the country of Zebulun. And, and I thought it was kind of interesting because Elon, his name, is the Hebrew number 356, and Agilon is the number 357. Um, but they're not directly related words, which, which I found kind of interesting. Um, so it's kind of interesting that uh, where he's buried is just in the Hebrew uh, Strong's con Concordance, uh, Dick Strong's Dictionary, it's only going to be one Hebrew number apart. I don't know what that means particularly, but uh, just thought that was interesting. And of course, uh, being a, Ze a Z Z Z Zebulonite is mentioned twice, right? It's mentioned in 12 and 11 and 1212. 12. And the country of Zebulun, right? So as you can see, they're the same Hebrew number, 2075. Now, what I looked at, um, so I spent a bit of time on this yesterday trying to, to understand what this symbol of Zebulun would be, be referring to. So I'll just show you what, what I went through in understanding this. Um, I just looked up Zebulun here on my chart. And of course, we have this May 23rd, 1863 to July 18, 2020 symbol. So that, that's Odilio's study on the tokens, harbingers, harbingers, and signs. And May 23rd, 1863 is going to be um, this uh, span of time to July 18th is the number of the tribe of Zebulun, 57,400 days. Now, um, so we did similar things with Naphtali and other tribes, Reuben, uh, the 46,500 days from the last day of the General Conference in 1888, because he's going from the last day of the General Conference in 1863. They're 25 years apart. So we can get that 25 in connection with uh, the line of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon because of the length of time that they reigned is 25 years. Um, so that gives us some symbol that connects us with that period of time from 1863 uh, to 1888, right? 25 years becomes significant in that sense. Um, and so, so I looked at this and I thought about it a little bit, um, what that would mean. I tried to look at uh, different representations of this number. So I thought, what if I took a tenth of it? So five, seven, forty. You know how many, how much time that is divided by three sixty-five point two five. I'm going to get fifteen years, right? And I think it was one hundred and fifty-nine days or something like that. Uh, Oh, 261 and a quarter days. Um, and I was doing a bunch of other calculations. So these are some of the things that I would do. Um, it's almost nine months. Um, 
So I try to say, how does Zebulun relate to uh, this history, right? That's, that's the thing that I was trying to understand. How can we relate Zebulun? Now, what is the nature of Zebulun, by the way? What is Zebulun in um, the blessings that uh, Jacob gives his son? Uh, what is the issue of Zebulun? What is Zebulun first? That shall be a haven for a haven for ships, and his borders shall be on his island. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's in Genesis chapter forty-nine, thirteen. Yeah. Okay, so Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea. Um, and that, that word's an interesting word. It's uh, Kof, sheltered bay, haven ashore. Um, uh, sea, of course, is Mim, or Yam, pardon me. Uh, Yam, so that's the sea. And he shall be a haven for ships. So he's a haven of the sea, a haven for ships, of ships. And his border shall be unto Zidon. Right, so Zidon is uh, one of these seacoast cities of, uh, um, well, generally speaking, you're going to see the, the Philistines there. Um, now, Zebulun himself means uh, uh, exalted, right? And, but it comes from a word uh, to enclose, that is to reside. So. It's kind of strange that, that that's the meaning of the name, just because it comes from a root. The significance of the root isn't always um, the meaning of the name directly. Can and, you what that means? Uh, the exalted for Zebulun. The other one. That oh, you the, just... root? Well, the root is just to dwell with, right? To pro properly to enclose. So it's kind of hard to say, how does to enclose relate to being exalted? Well, I don't know, but it, it kind of relates to um, the description of, you know, where he's going to be, the enclosed uh, port area for ships, you know, like a cove for yeah. ships. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it relates to his name as far as uh, the root of the name but it doesn't relate to the name exalted that I can see, but, but he's going to be an enclosure, a haven of ships. Right. And, and of course, when Jacob is blessing his sons, I mean, he's speaking prophetically. Um, and a lot of this wouldn't be realized until later uh, what he meant in these blessings. <clears throat> but um Anyway, so we have Zebulun, and we had uh, this application of, of Zebulun's uh, numbering of the tribe uh, that was done by uh, Odilio, right? Now, um, now there's two numberings of the tribes, right? You have the, the initial numbering in Numbers 1 and 2, and then in Numbers 26, they're numbered again. Uh, Zebulun's going to increase by 3,100. Right, so he's going to end up with sixty thousand five hundred. So he's going to increase um, from one hundred fifty-seven years, fifty-five and point seven days, to um, uh, whatever it ends up being. Or if this is yeah, one hundred and sixty-five. So he increases by about eight years. Um, Eight, in almost nine years, eight and, eight and a bit. Anyway, um, and that would be that 3,100 days, which is eight years and something. I know this could be a little bit boring, all this math stuff. So yeah, almost eight and a half years.
uh, specifically, eight years and 178 days um, is what Zebulun increases from Numbers chapter 2 to Numbers 26. Um, so, so I looked at these types of things dealing with Zebulun. I try to say, okay, how does this relate? How does all of this about Zebulun relate to this date of December 25th, 2021? And, and to the dates that follow, right? So we know that this is um, Elon, right? So he's the second angel's message. He's a Zebulonite. What does that mean in the in the context of this line? So that would be, um, you know, part of it. And any thoughts on that on how we could look at that? Now, if you counted from uh, the day that we began to study. So on December 25th, 2021, Colin's going to do his presentation. And then we're going to begin the study of understanding the lines on the 26th, right? So the next day, we do an understanding the lines. And if you count from the next day, it'll bring you to June 22nd, 2030. It's the 20th day of the third month on the biblical calendar. Um, it's it's uh, 1310, uh, the last two digits on the Mayan calendar. So is it significant that the 2030 shows up again with the January or uh, June 22nd? Was it 622? Is that what that was? Yeah, 622. So in 2030. Yeah. So if you count 3,100 days from the day that we begun this study of understanding the lines, which we began on the Sunday, right? After December 25th, we have the Sunday, right? That's the next day. In the morning study, we're going to begin this study of understanding the lines. And um, uh, if we count from that date, it'll bring us to June 22nd, 2030. Is it inappropriate? right now to um, count those days between the April 5th, 2030 and the uh, 622? Um, well, you can, so. No, I can't, I don't have my computer. <laughs> yeah, well, if we do, um, it'll be um, 78 days. So whatever that means. But you know, this is what we do. We look at these numbers and we try to say, how does this relate? How, do, how can we take these symbols and, and relate them? Right. Now, um, we have then, uh, so we're, we're going to have to have a formalization and an empowerment. Now, now part of it, we could, we, there's different ways we could look at this. So we know it's December 25th, 2021, right? And, and how do we know that that's the date that we're going to use for Elon? What, what's the reason that we give for putting Elon there on December 25th, 2021, the 20th day of the ninth month? Because, I mean, I put him there. It is definitely a lot clearer with the December 6th, but part of it has to do with the lines that were created. So we're saying that Elon is the center waymark of this uh, empowerment of the second angel's message in the line of the judges. Uh, but we use the December 25th, 2021 date as the arrival of a message. And... Part of it was just how we took December 6th as the starting because we're trying to understand 
what, what this darkness is and what this line would be addressing. And since this is the empowerment of a message that this way mark is, and we already had confirmed December 6, 2020 structure, um, do we have to then create this line the way that we've done it? it or is this just us following down a path, just assuming? I mean, we have some pretty interesting things in putting these dates here, the 300 days divided by 80 and 220, dealing with the response of the declaration, which is this February 24th, 2021 date, the publication of um, understanding the history of December 4th to 6th. And remember, that's going to be coming from the story of Ezra and Nehemiah that I explained those three days. And then the October 2nd date is simply um, the empowerment of that when uh, basically I'm kicked out of the American group, but they wouldn't look at it that way maybe. But it's definitely being punished for um, uh, my reaction to Mark Johnson's study on transhumanism. So me rejecting that conspiracy theory about that you can become transhuman by taking the vaccine is not what anybody's ever claimed. Um, so then, so we have that. So now we got Elon. So we don't have a lot to go on. We just have the symbol of his name, the 10 years. We, we have that he's a Zebulonite and we can tie him to the June 22nd, 2030 date by taking that span of difference between the two countings of the tribe of Zebulun, three, 3,100 years, 3,100 uh, days, I mean, or years, taken from the numbering, right? So 3,100 days is eight years and 178 days, right, on the Gregorian calendar. And that brings us to June 22nd, 23rd, if we just counted from that date. Inclusive or pardon? It's just, well, we're, we're actually counting it exclusively. That is, we're technically counting from December 26th. So it would be counting from the end of December 25th to the beginning of June 22nd. But we start the study of the understanding of the lines is in is connected with this December 25th, 2021 date. So yeah, if you just did a cardinal count, you'd have to start on the 26th to get to June 22nd. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the, getting me to clarify that. Now we have the symbol of 46. Now what's the symbol of 46 in Elon's gematria? What would that, um, how would that apply to December 25th, 2021? Uh, um, I'm thinking the, for, I, I, when you said 46, I'm thinking 45. Um, but, well, 46 would bring us to October 22, 1844, which Jeff marks as the Sunday law. We also mark December 25th, 2021 as the Sunday law. Right? Yes. Okay. So that would help us place that on December 25th, 2021. The 10 years gives us that this is the idea of a remnant, right? a 10th. But now we have to come up with a formalization. So we can just say, well, we have December 25th and, and we have a formalization of a message. Now in some of our lines, we would put uh, Odilia study you know, as connected to December 25th, 2021, Collins and Odilio study. But this isn't really addressing uh, that part of it, right? Because this is um, 
I mean, we could say, because this is all about the symbolic use of dates, um, at least the first part is, and this is about time. So the period of darkness that's being addressed has to do with what is empowered, which is the symbolic use of dates on December 25th, 2021. And so we could argue, well, Odilio uh, uh, provides some of that in his study, right? And that's particularly going to be the study of um, the mandates, right? So uh, the spans of time there, how they relate to our lines. And, and we're going to get there the number uh, 1629, right? Um, Right, so that number 1629 was this number that was um, what was 1629 about? It had to do with the falling of, of the manna. The 1629? No. No, it never had to do with the well, forest. Okay, I got it mixed up. <laughs> okay, it can be combined with other symbols. And and so, you know, so if we possibly could put that as the formalization. Uh, 46 is a foundation of the human body and the temple. Uh, John 2, verse 19 and 20, understanding lines. Um, okay, so... Right, because if you add three ninety one to sixteen twenty nine, you get twenty twenty. Um, uh, can't remember the other. If you add one eighty seven, you get eighteen sixteen. That's good going to be September 11th, 1816, Miller's conversion. I can't remember the other things that Odilia did with 1629, but he did look at chapters, right? Um, so if we go here, um, So he looked at chapters and he looked at, um, was it Leviticus 1629? Um, I can't remember which ones he looked at. I know I looked at another one, which uh, it was Exodus 1629. And he was trying to connect this to uh, the mandates. Um, See, for the Lord hath given you a Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Okay, so you're correct, Angela, that there is this application here uh, to the manna, right? Uh, so the people rested well, on so really. <laughs> But I think that was indirectly that you got this, unless you were thinking this. And, well, and, when I heard that, I just flashed back to that, and I thought, is it the number of weeks? I thought, no, it's the chapter number. Okay, right. So the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was was like coriander seed white. The taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So this, this becomes an important um, a point uh, because we have this, uh, this understanding of this manna, which – this is going to lead us to counting the number of days that the manna fell. So it's going to be 2,084 weeks, um, uh, 14,588 days, uh, the cardinal count from when it first falls to when they last go to, to gather in it, and there is none. Um, uh, so the, both of those are going to be Sundays. If we count the actual time that the manna fell from the first day that it fell, to the last day it fell, um, that's going to be 14,587. Um, so that's 1440 
zero plus 187 days. Um, so you get that tenth. So there, so there's something here about that 1629, which is, which I think is um, something we still haven't grappled with. We haven't spent a lot of time looking at it. But we see it here it's connected to the mana. Now, he also did primarily number 1629. So number 1629 was, and if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. Now, this I didn't quite understand why he could see the significance of this in related to the, to the mandates. Um, I mean, I understand sort of the reasoning, uh, um, but if you read in the context here, I mean, this is going to be about Cord, Dathan, and Abiram, right? Um, so the Lord spake unto Moses, 1623, saying, speak unto the congregation, saying, get you up from about the tabernacle of Cor, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. The elders of Israel followed him. Um, and he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of their tent of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Kor, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood on the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. So hereby sh ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. So, so this is a confirmation that Moses has been led by God. And so it says, if the, these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, and with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick or living or alive into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. Right? So, so when we deal with this, I mean, his loose association here doesn't really uh, speak to me in the way that he's trying to apply this. So one is we have the Exodus one dealing with... Um, uh, the, the the manna, right? So when they go to grab gather the manna, and that that's interesting because this is addressing the Sabbath, right? Uh, that that you're going to have a double portion on the sixth day because of the Sabbath. But the other one that to me is also significant is Leviticus sixteen twenty nine. So this is going to be addressing um, uh, the Day of Atonement, right? So the 10th day of the seventh month, I mean, that's pretty significant to me to take the day of 29, um, take this symbol, yeah, we're taking the symbol of six. Yeah, Ron's a bird there. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so 1629. So we have this, this symbol here uh, in these three uh, books, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And I think we have to put these all together. So this is another three. I just keep seeing these threes pop up, what we're talking about. Yeah. 
I mean, so this is really about God's judgments. The book, The Day of Atonement, uh, uh, the fact that he's going to provide this manna, right? Um, and of course, if somebody goes out to gather the manna, then they, you know, they're disregarding the Sabbath. So we have the Sabbath, we have the Day of Atonement, and we have a God's judgment against Korodathan and Abiram. And the three. Yeah. And so when we, we go back to this chart where we have placed uh, you know, this this line that we're we're constructing. I mean, I, I we can say that this 1629 symbol then must apply here somewhere. Now, I, I think there's just a simple way to look at this. <clears throat> so I'm going to put uh, a date here. So we get introduced to the symbol 1629 on uh, it's what February is it 12th, 2022. I think that's the date. Sounds right. Modelia study. It's going to be 49 days after. December 25th, 2021. So it's easy just to see. Uh, yeah, so it's February 12th, 2022. And so we're going to get this symbol of 1629. So when is that empowered? And we're talking about the December 25th, second angels. When did that, when was that in power? That's what you're asking. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you got the message arrives and then it's going to be formalized with Odilio study, which brings us the 1629 symbol, right? Yes. Yes. And then uh, we apply that 1629 symbol in relationship to November 24th, 2022. Explain, please. That's the Thanksgiving date, right? Okay, yes. Okay, and that yeah, date- I remember. Is uh, from June 9th, 2018, when we get um, time introduced into this movement right, as far as time setting. That's going to be 518 days before November 9th, 2019. That's 1,629 days to November 24th, 2022, right? So, so we had had this symbol there. It's 1,111 days after November 9th, 2019, and it's 18... 1,559 days, which is in base eight, is 1,533 uh, days after July 18. So it's 859 days, which as a symbol can be 1,533. Right. So this was the study that we did regarding um, November 24th. We also have uh, to November 24th, the 1,629 weeks from the misdated New World Order speech by Bush. Uh, this one actually is going to be given on a different date, September 23rd, 1991. That's where he gives the speech to the 46th session, 46th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, people get confused between that date and another date. So, so it's not on September 11th, 1991, but it's on September 23rd, 1991, but it's misdated, right? So we have this misdated date. Um, and it's just another drawing of the same chart um, with a little bit different details in it. So this one's going to address 11,900 days from April 26, 1990. Um, and it's going to address, this chart also is going to address the, the days that the manna falls. It's going to bring us to April 5th, 
2030. And then we also have this 2688 number, right? So that's uh, uh, an application for the additional uh, 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 additional extension of time to file uh, some documents for American taxes, right? Yeah, it was a form number. It turned yeah, out to be the number. extension form number of the extension date. Yeah, to to um, yeah, the form is to apply for additional extension of time. Right. Right. And so we found lots of things in connection with that number. So, uh, so when I look at this, if I'm going to understand uh, this. I'm going to just put this symbol here. As a symbol. So that's a symbol that we get on November 24th, 2022. This 2688. We're going to have that connected. So we got these two symbols, the 1629 and the 2688. Now, again, you can see we can take this April 5th, 2030 date, and we can tie it to the end of this because of the symbols in connection with this line. All right, so we can put this here. as this eighth way bar, because this, this, this line is witnessing to that um, through these different symbols. Now, now we're saying that this is attached to the message of Elon, that we don't have these, these numbers in that story, but it's just the fact that we can place December 25th, 2021 as Elon, and then we can we can say that this February twelfth date introduces this symbol that can lead us to this November twenty fourth, twenty twenty two date, and that's going to happen before this December twenty fifth, twenty twenty two date. Now, how many days is it from November twenty fourth? Um, let me see here to December 25th, that's gonna be 32 days, right? No, 31 days. So you're gonna have 31 days between those two dates. And um, so, so we've got 31 there, just trying to figure out. And this, there was something else, I can't remember what it is. Okay, so, so we're gonna leave Elon there. So whether people are happy with this or not. Um, but I just see this as a natural extension of Colin and um, Odilio's study. Because connected with this November 24th date, um, had to, what it related to was this here, I'm just gonna go back here. Um, so I don't, I don't end up putting a uh, call in study in here. So, but in call in study, he's going to have, um, this, uh, he doesn't put it in there, but it's there. And that is going to be the December 25th, 2022 date. So in Collins, um, election prediction. So what was he predicting? So that's going to be taken over. Well, uh, after talking with him yesterday about this, I'm still kind of unaware because uh, he doesn't think he was saying what we had thought before. That's what he kept saying. 
but he was challenging, challenging our understanding. So what did he say that we're saying that he wasn't saying? Well, we were saying that, uh, um, that, let's see, if I seem to recall that stuff. Um, William, can you help me? You were there. What, what, what were we talk? What were we discussing on that when when that subject popped up? He was he was saying that we were saying something about it. I, I, oh uh, no, I can't remember, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and look at this. So the it was the red wave takeover over the Senate to put in uh, Trump. As yeah, that was that was it. That's what I said. That's that's basically what we said was the. Um, yeah, but he said he didn't say that. He said that's he, what he was saying. He said he was making a. Um, he how did he have speculation? It? Spe well, I don't know about speculation, but he said. He said that um. <clears throat> that everybody put that in his mouth that he said that Trump was going to get in before, two thousand twenty four. And he didn't say that. Well, he told That's me what that he was he, telling me. He did, though, because he plainly told me that even recently when I went to visit him, that Trump's going to be put in uh, prior to 2024. And he's not. That's what I had my memory said. said. What's that? In, that was what my memory was. Is that uh, that's what that's well, anyway, what I kept sticking on. I didn't mean to get into all that. Yes, no, 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 was, no, 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 no. Dude, this is what we're talking about. Because, well, well, I wouldn't admit trying to get into all that yesterday. I was trying to get talk to him about the um the maze he made on them um charts. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter anyway. We 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 don't need to go on that. So the main thing but is the subject not, did come up. Yeah. So the point is November eighth. He had this midterm election was going to be, um, it because he plainly said that it had to be um, uh, a complete victory for the Republicans, right? That they had to come in. He he tied it to uh, the idea of of a pineum, right? So January sixth was Raffia, and then we have to have. The Republicans come back and win. However, you know, he wants to characterize it. I don't know, but that was pretty clear in his studies um, that that's what he was saying. Whether he was just saying that that was a suggestion that might happen, it seemed pretty sure to me that it had to happen, right? From, from his studies, what he was saying from his studies. And of course, that didn't happen. But that's not the main point that I'm trying to say here is he had this midterm election November 8th date. And then he's going to take the 46 and the 19 represent Biden and Trump, but not actual days, right? So he doesn't put January 11th there. But notice um, here, I count the 46 days to the 24th. Now, now, Colin doesn't really do this, but he marks the 25th. Does anybody know why he marked December 25th uh, in 2022 in his studies? Not to my recollection. So that's, the reason, that's the reason I was asking about his charts. I was wanting to find out where did... Um, all these dates that he had up there and the um, time periods and spans and where he was getting them from, but I never did get no answer. But for one, I think it was for um, Ron can help me remember. It's about the um, the forty two and the uh, two ten and all these other numbers that he had on that. Well, I understand his charts, um, and I don't have problems with the charts per se, except that. Um, cause I think the dates are valid and the spans are valid. Um, but what he doesn't have is a structure to interpret it. Well, right. he also, that's kind I of what he, I was born at. Yeah. I think he split one line and put another line 
in the place of that bond. Yeah. He split it in half. Okay. I think you know you noticed that October twenty date that he had. Yeah. Then he, I think he split it right there in the middle of that twenty uh, tw uh, October twenty date because because he had the he had the beginning and the end on the he had in the beginning he had three sixty three and then at the end he had I think what was it um yeah anyway it doesn't matter right so. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not well, I'm bad at you, but the me. details. I don't want to go into the details of it. I want to go into the general understanding of it. So what he's going to do is he's going to use the prophetic mirror, right? Yes, he does. Okay. But he's going to have days at the beginning, and he's going to have that November 22nd date, right? He's going to place that there. So he's going to count um, the first one cardinally, the next one ordinally. Or inclusively, right? Because the 65 days are inclusive. They're not a cardinal count. So he's going to count from the election where Biden is elected in 2020. He's going to count 65 days inclusive to the siege of Washington, D.C., right? And, and he's going to then put November 22nd in there. I can't remember what he has for November 22nd, something to do with the confirmation of the something. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what that date was, um, but he's going to have the 19 and, and the 46 in that way. But then at the end, he doesn't use days, but we do, right? That is, it's consistent. If you have dates there at the beginning, it makes no sense to say we're not, not going to put January 11th there 60 on the 65th day from the midterm election. You need to put it there. And then we put 46 and 19. But the 46 is is, is cardinal and the 19 is uh, uh, ordinal. Well, it's the 19th day, January 11th. Right? So that, that's how I structured that line. Okay, makes sense. And so Colin doesn't do this. But the point is that we need to do this for this to have any significance. Well, it, it makes it, it gives us a sense of of something more tangible as opposed to uh, starting with the days and then all of a sudden go to president state uh, number. Yeah, uh, I, I wasn't understanding that at all because of yeah. the the it's inconsistent. Now, see, the, the thing about this is that we know that um, this is significant. His structure is significant, way more significant if we take it as dates than if we don't. Um, because it ties these center dates um, and these other dates, November 3rd and the Siege of Washington, you know, from the Siege of Washington to that December 24th date that I have is 718 days. And if I go from November 3rd to that date, it's 781 days, right? Both of these are symbols of July 18th, right? Um, yes, yes. Okay. And then of course we have the 781 days. These come from Odilio study where, you know, 71 times 11 is 781 and 187 uh, is, is equal to 11 times 17. So these are like mirrors. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so so Odilio's dates of this here, you can see how 187 and 781 are related to each other. And so Odilio did these types of things, plus also the 78 days being 7, 1,872 hours. That's in Odilio's study. And well, I think it's the 780 days being 18,720 hours. It's also uh, 111 weeks and uh, 259,200 seconds. That's dealing with the, um, how the Israelites divide the day, 25920 days uh, or parts, right, in a day. 
Um, yes. So, so there's all these different symbols that that we can that we can then derive from this structure if we just put the dates there, and and then it witnesses to our April fifth, twenty thirty date. But right now they're not wanting to put any dates there. Right? They don't want to have this end anywhere here. And 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 I. And I understand that he doesn't do that, but I'm saying that he has to do that because then it's meaningful. Otherwise, uh, you don't have any of this connection if you don't have those dates there. And, and the dates are there, right? I mean, they're not like, we're not putting them there. They're there in the structure itself and they witness to the, to the truthfulness of the structure. So when we... Um, then uh, look at this line because we're going to deal um, with uh, Abdon uh, tomorrow. But when we look at this line, what we can see is that we have this message that arrives on December 25th, 2021. And this is the message that is testing uh, this movement at that time, right? So during this period of time, we actually, um, basically, I'm not participating. I'm watching a few of the videos, but I'm not really participating in the Canadian American group studies. Right? So we're focusing on our studies here in this time. On December 5th, 2022, we actually join once again with them in their studies. So uh, we made an appeal on for December 25th, 2021 to work together. They refused that appeal. And on December 25th, 2022, we decide to can start watching their studies again, at least, you know, prophetically uh, that we're gonna try participating in these studies. I haven't been at a lot of them because I've been doing other things on Sabbath. We had a friend over yesterday who um, we've been studying with and uh, things like that. So. But I have gone to some of the evening studies and some of some of the Sabbath studies. But anyway, that's we're saying that December 25th, 2022, another message arrived. And this is the history that we're in right now. We're in this history where the third angel's message has arrived. And it's going to be joined by the fourth angel. Right? That's what it's looking like. Yeah. Now we know that prior to that, uh, if we're going to parallel Millerite history, uh, you're going to have uh, a falling away after the third angel arrives. Now we know that God's leading us to the upper room. We just don't know where it is and when it is. So... But, but it's also about the divorcement, too, right? December 25th, 2022 is about the divorcement. And, of course, that's the third angel arriving in this line. It's the third angel arriving is January 11th, 2023, in the line of the judges, which is going to be Samson. Right? And Samson, we spent a lot of time on. And we're, when we draw the lines of Samson, you'll see it's it's rather complex. It's the most complex of all of the, the lines. It's going to take us probably a couple of months, I think, to get Samson out on a line, uh, drawn out. Okay, so any, any further comments about this? I know some of you have been fairly quiet. Well, Theodore, again, I, I don't have any of the notes to contribute. Um, well, that's okay, but you know, still, you're. But I, I, this, this is, it's even becoming more clear to me what's, where we're heading, with this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, I'm looking for that upper room experience myself, bro. Yeah, well, it starts with us. Yes. 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 But, but yeah, I mean, we're all facing different trials, things that are causing us to look at ourselves. Um, hopefully we're facing those trials to cause us to look at ourselves. Um, but this, this is where we're at with these lines. So we, we, we now have to understand Abdon 
as as the third way mark. Because <clears throat> I, I think this is based on what we've done, this is sort of a self-evident line. I, I don't see how we could um, do any differently than this line. Just doing a calculation here. Hmm. Okay. Theodore. Yep. Is there um a tenth month and a twentieth day in the Bible? No. Twentieth day of the tenth month, not that I've seen. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know of one. I mean, simple thing is you just search it, but um, I can't think of Not so simple. <laughs> Doing the like the first day of the first month, not so simple. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that shows up in the in the search, but then you have to go through that search. If you've got I'll search it. No, they're usually pretty simple. I, I don't. I'm know. sorry. You use what? I try to search it later today. I've been trying to look at all the numbers well you just yeah it's pretty simple to do as far as i'm concerned I mean, you just, well yeah you just type in those things 20th day third month or whatever the whatever it is and then you go through it but there's a lot of stuff that'll pop up with some of that information yeah uh, that, well, yeah you're gonna you have to go through it yeah there's no 20th day of the 10th month so now there, there's still a, some more here though of course about the the 25 years. Um, you know, the one thing I think about with that is Ezekiel um, chapter one, because we know this, this symbol is about December 25th, the Sunday law. And that's the 10th day of the seventh month as a symbol. And Ezekiel 40 verse one, it's going to be in the 25th year of the captivity, right? So this is going to be um uh, the 25th year since the uh, Ezekiel was taken captive as well as Jehoiachin and so you got that 25 years there um so I think that's relevant because you're going to have the December 25th 2022 that's going to be as a symbol 25 years we also have that 10th day of the seventh month because 479 days is 107 times seven. Um, so we keep having these symbols that relate to uh, the Sunday law. And, and in some ways, you know, when we think about the pandemic as being a type of the Sunday law, I mean, it's mostly really a type of the Sunday law for us, but not in the way that we expected. Right, which, which actually shows us um, some things about uh, the Sunday law that's coming. Because people can think they're ready for the Sunday law. Just like in this movement, we can think we're ready for this event, that we know what we need to do, whatever we, however we think we had to uh, relate to the pandemic as a type of the Sunday law. And yet we completely miss the boat. Right? That That I think is is something that we really have to consider, is that we believe we're rich and increased with goods, have need of nothing, but knoweth not that we're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That is, we think we're ready for something that we're not ready for. That has been the past experiences. Yeah. So I, I don't know why we can't learn from the lessons of the past, but we seem not to be able to. Um, 
know, as I told my kids, don't make the same mistakes I did, make your own. Um, it just seems that we, we make the same mistakes of our parents, right? For some reason. We got yeah. a minute to, uh, <clears throat> um, Theodore, I got a quote. Yeah. Um, Okay, what's your quote? It's from Review and Herald, October 9th, 1894. Okay. His letters have come to me asking me if I have any special light as to the time when probation will close. And I ask that I have only this message to bear, that it is now time to work while the day lasts. For the night cometh in which no man can work. Now, just now, it is time for us to be watching, working, and waiting. The word of the Lord reveals the fact that the end of all things is at hand, and it is testimony to testimony is much <clears throat> de decided that it is necessary for every soul to have the truth planted in the heart, so that we will control so. Well, so that it will control the life and sanctify the character. The Spirit of the Lord is working to take the truth, <clears throat> to take the truth of the inspired word and stamp it. Did I read that right? I think so. The Spirit anyway, of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is working to take the truth of the inspired word and stamp stamp it upon the soul so that the professed followers of Christ will have holy sacred joy I think that's what it is that they will be able to impart to others the opportunity now for us to, to work is now just now while the day lasts but that, but there is no commandment for anyone to um, search the scriptures in order to ascertain if, if possible, when probation will close. God has no such message for any mortal lips. He would have no mortal, mortal tongue declare that which he has hidden in his secret counsels. Right. And you bring this up for the reason of? I did. It struck me this morning because, I mean, people, I, I read it because it just struck me. I, I just wanted to read it. Yeah, this, this idea that we had back in 2018, that November 9th was going to be this close of probation. Yeah. Yes. This, this is one of the reasons I opposed it. I right. reckon that's the reason I read it, because I was thinking about it, about yeah. when um, when that took place. Yeah, because we can't know the time of the close of probation. And, and what people were expecting, as far as I'm concerned, was really fanaticism, the idea that they were going to now be sealed so that they couldn't sin anymore. And the idea was that, you know, if we can stop sinning before November 9th, once November 9th comes, then we're not going to sin anymore, right? I mean, it's totally a misunderstanding of righteousness by faith. And, uh, you know, but this was really prominent in the movement. Um, but all we could ever say is that, you know, people receive light. They can close their probation so that they can't 
and, and we could look at it as a way mark on a line as a close of probation. But we couldn't say that everybody who rejected that message has closed their probation. Um, and, and especially it would not be a close of probation, which him that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Just, you know, people receive light and if they reject it, uh, they do so to their own peril. Um, I didn't mean to hold you up, but I just thought I'd read it. That's okay. It's okay. I'm not in a rush today. But, um, you know, usually I don't like to go over, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks for that. Let's uh, close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the time we had this morning. And we just pray that we can contemplate these things, that your Holy Spirit can speak to us, and that we can um, uh, come to these things tomorrow. With, with a fresh uh, mind and that you can correct any errors we may have. Uh, be with us throughout this day, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.